You guys have asked me a lot of great questions on my YouTube channel, which is awesome. So in today's video, we're doing nothing else but answering your questions. So stay tuned and see if you've been featured. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. In today's episode, I'm gonna dive into my YouTube comments and answer some questions that I get a lot. I think it might help the whole community. So let's get into these comments. So Pure Gains asks, by the way, awesome YouTube name. Is it possible for you to make a video talking about getting fish for the first time for the water tank? What type of water is needed for an aquaponic system? Ratio of how many fish inside the liters of water? Great question and I've got this question a few times. So basically what he's asking is the stocking density and your water source. So let's start with the water source. We're lucky here we have well water. If you're in the same situation your water will be pretty chemical free and chlorine free and have trace minerals in it such as calcium and iron. But if you're in a city, you might have water that is treated with chlorine or some other chemicals. One thing that you can do to get rid of chlorine is simply set your system up in the sunlight or your greenhouse. Sunlight will naturally degas chlorine from the water over the course of five to seven days. If you are inside of a building and you don't have access to sunlight maybe, you can consider putting your water outside, doing that, and then bringing it in. That's not an option. There are dechlorinators that you can buy for fish tanks. But definitely consider where your water is coming from. Type of water needed for an aquaponic system. Honestly, certain fish are less tolerant of water chemicals and whatnot, like salmonids, for example. Trout and salmon are kind of more babies when it comes to water quality. But tilapia, catfish, cyprinids, like goldfish and koi, they're gonna be way more tolerant. And I haven't had any issues with putting fish into my systems with the well water that we have the same day. Ratio, how many fish inside liters of water? So obviously when fish are fingerling or fry size, you can pack in quite a bit of fish into a system. The issue is once those fish get larger, you're gonna have to spread them out amongst other tanks. So a number that's kind of loosely thrown around in the industry is one pound of fish biomass per every two gallons of water. So if you have 75 tilapia at two pounds a piece, that's 150 pounds of fish biomass. For those 150 pounds of fish biomass, you want at least 300 gallons. Now again, that's a very loose number and tilapia are also tanks of the aquaculture world like I've discussed in other videos. I would always kind of err on the side of being conservative when it comes to fish stocking for your systems. Take note of your water clarity once the fish are stocked into the system. You will experience the notorious ammonia spike and your water probably will get a little bit foggy but it will clear up. If it doesn't clear up I would distribute those fish a little bit more widely but when I get tilapia fingerlings in I can put in 200 plus into a 300 gallon system for the first month or two of their lifespan, no problem. It's not until they get older that they need more space. Also, I would probably be proactive. Once your fish start to get larger, I would just take the time and move them a little bit or harvest them as you go. Like I discussed in previous videos, if you notice that the water is very cloudy, that's when you need to make adjustments. But if the water that you've stocked fish into is brown clear, you're good to go. If it's clear, you can see the bottom, but it has a brown tint to it, that's good. Soulfire Kitchen asks, I have a question about iron and pH. I have the exact same iron you're holding in the video, 11% DTPA. The issue we have is the pH has been unusually high for the past few months, 7.2 to 7.6. Will my plants absorb iron if I apply foliar even with this high pH? That's an excellent question. Personally, I haven't applied iron foliarly. I only apply it in my system, but let's talk about pH first. I would test the pH of your source water first just to see where it's at, but typically pH is going to go down naturally in aquaponic systems due to the production of carbon dioxide. So fish breathing, waste decomposing, those things are going to drive the pH down carbon dioxide plus H2O yields carbonic acid, which brings the pH down. So typically in aquaponics, the only thing you need to do is increase the pH using bases. If you need a chemical to decrease pH, phosphoric acid is one that I've used a few times to bring my pH down 0.2 to 0.5, and it will safely do the job for your fish. But I would definitely do that because even in soil, plants need a relatively acidic pH. I can't give you a good answer for the foliar iron spray because I've never done that. I would just lower the pH of my system and then put it into the water. I know that works. Maybe spray one of your plants with the iron foliar spray and leave one alone and see if that makes any adjustments. That way you can kind of draw your own conclusions based on the iron spray. You always really want to have your pH at seven or below for optimal plant nutrient absorption. Then they go on to ask, I stopped adding calcium, potassium, or iron into my water. 
water. I've been applying them foliarly for the past week. For the past several weeks, my pH hasn't changed much. So if you're trying to lower the pH, it depends on what you're adding, but a lot of the time these things that you're adding are bases. So you say here you're adding calcium. That's usually in the form of calcium carbonate, calcium hydroxide. Both of those things are bases. They're going to increase your pH. Potassium, same deal. Potassium carbonate, potassium hydroxide. Those are also bases. Going to increase your pH. So iron, I don't think that has a big effect on pH. That would affect your water hardness. The first thing I would do to your system is lower the pH, and then I would probably try to make nutrient adjustments. Another thing that you could consider is if there's a lot of algae in your system. Algae in the system can fluctuate pH a lot during the day and night because during the day it produces oxygen, during the night it produces carbon dioxide. So the pH, if there's a lot of algae growth, can kind of fluctuate during the day and night. Another thing to consider. Augusto Luna asks, one question about the UV light. That doesn't create any issues with iron collapsing from the water. I store the iron in a dark cabinet inside the building. Chelated iron will break down with exposure to sunlight. But as you can see, we try to keep all the layers of our system shaded. That cuts down on the algae growth and hopefully the iron is absorbed before the sunlight can actually break it down. But yes, if you store iron in the sunlit area, it will break down and become ineffective. Pacific Oceana says, your design is not good for plants to get nutrition because the diagram you show on the screen, fish tank, filter, degassing tank, and then to plant, you have filtered out all fish waste. How can your plants grow without getting any nutrition from your fish? I'm gonna just leave these here, but Let's break that down. So fish waste is produced in an aquaponic system. That is correct. For lack of uh, better analogies right now, because I'm doing this kind of off the cuff, imagine the fish waste is like a hot slice of pizza. So the pizza is sitting there and it's producing steam. Fish waste is sitting there, but it's producing nutrients. So the fish waste itself isn't what fertilizes the plants. It's the nutrients that are released by the fish waste through aerobic breakdown by bacteria. So if you look at these plant roots of these plants that are clearly not thriving, there's no fish waste on them. That's because the fish waste has been removed, but the nutrients are being extracted from the waste and then going through the system. Fish waste on here can cause root rot. It's just not sanitary. You don't want fish waste coming into contact with your plants. Let's put that not thriving plant back. Wellrow Fabs asks, hi sir, I wanted to ask if it's okay to use concrete tanks as fish tanks in aquaponics. Absolutely. I think it's okay to use anything that will hold water. And I discussed this in a few other videos. The only thing that I would imagine with concrete is it would be hard to alter your design down the road. Plastic and these other things, fiberglass allow you to drill into them easily patch them, make alterations. I would think that concrete would be relatively permanent, but there's plenty of facilities that use raceway aquaculture, which are made of concrete. Ki Yun Ling asks, what concerns are the method? Great question. So potting mix is a great choice for hydroponics. It's cheap, it's accessible, it's definitely a good option. I have had some experience with potting mix in deep water culture systems. Like I said in that video, you do need to establish a good root system before you plant into any systems or else the soil can break down and, and cause a lot of mess. That's kind of the main concern for me as well as it can harbor pests. But I know of a lot of farms that use potting mix. I know of some farms that use coconut coir, which are both kind of uh, aggregate materials that can break down. They are spreadable. They're not like a compact sheet, like an oasis cube or a rock wool cube. But yeah, I'm all for it. If you can maintain it and establish that good root development before placement into your system, I think potting mix is a good choice. Carlos Aviles asks, hey brother, thanks for the video. A couple of questions. Can you use two different media beds, i.e. lava rock, then top it off with clay pebbles or perlite? How should the media be? So yeah, you can use any type of media. And if you use two, I would probably put a more water absorbent one on the bottom and a less water absorbent one on the top. Uh, I wouldn't do the reverse because you want to maintain moisture in the root system. But yeah, if you're on a budget and you only have a certain amount of a couple different types of media, no problem. I would definitely use both. Plants aren't gonna care. As far as what you need to think about is which one retains moisture better. John the Awe asks, would you say deep water culture is the best method for ease of cleanup? Um, I'm 
pro deep water culture because it is easy and I think it has a pretty good yield. It's not labor intensive. If one reason that I really like it is if the electricity goes out, all these plants are going to survive. Obviously you can make preparations for generators and that kind of thing, but I just like the peace of mind knowing that if something does go wrong and I can't get here, that these plants are not going to all die. I also like it for the nitrification that it provides. It's a humongous biofilter for the system and it helps with your water quality. I think you could probably argue the productivity for different types of vertical farms against the productivity of this system versus like a vertical farm or something like that as far as the plant output per square foot. But I think those other methods of farming require a little bit more labor and monitoring. So for the labor and monitoring versus output kind of scale, this is what I like to go with. Ease of cleanup, sorry, I didn't even answer that part. It is kind of easy. I mean, it's easy to pull the rafts out, harvest them, clean them, and put them back. As far as cleaning the debris that gets into the raft beds, I would make sure that your filtration prior to this is awesome because it is a pain in the butt to vacuum these out. Gary Ash asks about my Dutch bucket hydroponics video. Very helpful, but can it be used in an aquaponics system? Yes, I've seen a few aquaponics systems that use Dutch bucket systems, one in Alabama that was a very, very large cucumber farm. And what they did was they had an entire room of aquaculture and all of their filters and their fish tanks and everything. And they pumped the water from a sump tank in the ground to an entire other greenhouse. And that greenhouse was strictly Dutch bucket cucumber production. So yes, I have seen it and it can be done. Fish particles can cause problems for small irrigation. So I definitely would make sure that the water that you're putting into the Dutch bucket system is free of particles and clean. But yes, it can be done. How many gallons is your cone bottom tank? Really easy, it's 60 gallons. Alyssa Shear asks, interesting note about the fish water. What about coconut coir or husk? Thanks. Alyssa, great point. Coconut coir, coconut husk, another viable option that I didn't discuss in the video. I've only had experience with it for a few months when I inherited this farm. We had a surplus of it, so I used it up. Just a little bit more labor that goes into it. It's a great media. It's nutritionally inert. It expands when you add water to it. It's pretty good at holding water. It's a good choice as long as you can establish that good root base. And I've recently learned that that is a good choice of growing media for microgreens production. Akil Nishani asks, is it possible to do a video on fish to water ratio based on daily feed input and size of the filters for the same. There's a lot of ratios that go into this and I kind of covered this in this video already, but feed ratios is something that I talked about in another video on my channel. That number is 30 to 50 grams of food per meter squared. That's kind of a loose number again. I try to get my fish to eat as much food as they can. Obviously that's going to grow them and it's also going to grow my plants. Sizing of the filters, I would say that your water flow into the filters, the speed at which your water flows into the filters is kind of more important than the size of the filter itself. You want your filter to be large enough where the water flow into it isn't going to disrupt the settling of the particles. You want those particles to go in there and settle. If the water is coming in too quickly, that's going to cause problems for you. That's something that you're going to have to kind of play around with. There might be a mathematical number out there that answers that. My filters are 60 gallons and they're hooked up to two 300 gallon tanks. So 60 gallons to 600 gallons. Maybe that's a one to 10 ratio. Maybe that exists somewhere, but that's what we use. Hey, video, does aqua Aquaponics really provide all the nutrients needed for leafy greens at least. Did you have the need to add nutrients to the system? So BJ, I believe I covered this in my nut hydroponic nutrients video. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way, aquaponics provides 13 of the 16 essential nutrients. So to answer your question, yes, you have to add nutrients to the system. Calcium, iron, potassium. I covered iron already. I plan on doing videos on calcium and potassium. But yeah, you do have to add stuff. Leafy greens even you have to add iron for. But for the most part, they're going to do well. If you add iron, they're going to do perfect. Phase Infinity asked about my tilapia spawning video. Does all tilapia spawn like this? I actually talked about that in the video. All tilapia from the genus Oreochromis spawn like that. There's another genus of tilapia, maybe multiple, but they don't. Bit by Bit asked, do you still feed the tilapia while she has eggs in her mouth? No, I don't. That's another reason why you need to get the eggs out of her mouth promptly because she'll get hungry and actually eat them herself. So you want to either get them out of her mouth within the first couple hours and put them into a hatching jar, or you can take the risk and let her do it. But if she's hungry, she's going to eat them. Sean Ray asked, do we use air stones or air hose? We use air stones. They're hooked up to this air line right here. They're called air diffusers, actually. I use this. I use these. 
they don't break. A lot of those cheap, cheap air stones break. Uh, but yeah, that's what we use. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for this round of questions and answers. If you learned something from that, consider hitting that subscribe button. We have a lot of good aquaponics and hydroponics content coming for you this year. And stay tuned for the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching.